Go ahead, go ahead, we'll record. So, let's uh, So, okay. So, let's start off with what I think probably will be one of the more interesting first things. So, this comes from a limited company called Force Plus Game. Also, can you hear me all right? Put that little bit right there. So, Force Plus Games is another limited company. This is their first release now. They do a bundle in individual. So I bought the bundle, but they've had a delay. So they sent the first game to everyone because of the delay. So uh, I always actually had a whole new world. Uh, but the reason I got the bundle is because it saves on shipping. And I could probably get, like, you know, the amount that this costed. It's actually pretty nice, though. It has, a, as you can see, it has, like, a book slip cover to it for the game of that and it also came with a postal which is advertising the Game Boy color game they have yeah and of course you got the advertisement for the leases okay. but what was interesting to me is what they're, they're trying to... Game Boy Co. game, yes. Um, go to the Force Plus games if you're interested in it. Um, I might actually get it if it's still available for the next bundle. I was kind of... I mean, it's not a complicated game. It's kind of... I don't know. Uh, I'd say kind of the levels of balloon fight, maybe, in a way. But more of a platform. Like, the concept is like you're flying upward while like avoiding things if I remember quickly but so one of the things all these limited companies are having trouble is finding something unique with their games so this company is doing something different they they have these collectible coins so depending on if you get them individual the limited edition or the bundles you're getting different coins so there were three coins the gold coin, if I remember correctly, only comes with limited editions. The bronze coin comes with if you buy them individually. And um, I believe if you get the bundle, you get the silver and you get the bronze coin with it, I think. I think I think that's how it works. You might have to go to the website. Either way, uh, I did get a bronze and silver coin. And they are individually numbered. Uh, mine is 145 out of 500 on the bronze. And the silver is 2,161 out of 3,000. So, they're pretty nice. Uh, you might notice they are in actual uh, little plastic things that you can open up and get the coin out. It's a little mill coin. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. See, the coin can come out. So, it's kind of a nice little thing, but, uh, you know, I got shit tons of collectible stuff, so it's not really something I need, but I'll give them quit. It's very different from, you know, all the cards and postcards that a lot of these companies do, so um, that is something nice, but I have too many collectibles, so it's not really something I direly need. Uh, let's see. I need to find the one game for that. Let's see. Okay. Our World is in. Now, my understanding, this is a visual novel. I got it on sale on Amazon. I think it was like 12 bucks or something. It wasn't much. But it's like something about like a video game world starts becoming part of the real world or some shit. And it got like this big art book. It comes with it. Now, it says... Um, that uh, we are incredibly proud to bring this to you. You're glad to be aware this contains um, uh, spoilers, so I haven't looked through it. So, But it is a pretty decently thick book. It is paperback to that. And, uh, of course, you get the game here. But uh, I'm not very familiar with this, aside from seeing images from We Set Era being com incredibly triggered over it. So, um... Ooh. Damn it, I hate when the... You ever get, like, brand new games? I had to open this up because the disc was in the tray. But you ever counter, like, where the cover art isn't properly all the way in the plastic? Like, I hate that. I don't know why. Like, somebody 
packing them too fast. Quick, fast, oh, pack them, quick, oh. And he's on the other side. But, yeah, I don't really know if this is a particularly good game. I don't know anyone else with it, so. But it was on sale, so I was like, why the fuck not? Let's see, uh, Helmut, uh, the, uh, the badass from Hell, this was a GameStop exclusive, but apparently now Amazon actually has it, and it's not Wii sellers, it's Amazon, but they have the Switch version, not the PS4 version, so as far as I can tell, this is for, uh, uh, this is still exclusive at GameStop. Uh, this is basically a Into the Gungeon clone. Uh, it wasn't too bad. It's basically change all the silly bullets to doom, and uh, that's kind of Helmut. It, not bad. But it feels like it doesn't have as much um, RNG bosses and that. Uh, you need to see what happens to Saturn games. Breaks my heart. You had to see when this happens to Saturn games. Wait, wait, what do you mean? What? Wait, what, what? See, what happened? What? You mean how, like, they're all cracked cases in there? Because I see that, like, at the few places I even have them, I see it all the time. <laughs> then I got lots of PS4 stuff. The cases on the covers. I don't think I've ever seen the the artwork be messed up on a Saturn. I mean, usually... Really? You'll have to show me a picture of that. I'm not sure I've seen what you're talking about though. Uh, let's see. The Sinking City. This was on sale for Amazon. I think it was like $15. I hope it was interesting. Uh, this was on sale for uh, Amazon. Um, I did do these as Best Buy matches, by the way. Uh, this was on sale on Amazon for um, $9, if I remember quickly. Uh, the Wizard Enhanced Edition was on sale at GameStop for like 10 bucks, I believe. I price matched that too. Um, this one, I was, next time I do some VRing, I want to try this. Uh, so you're like a fucking ninja in this, and you can do all kinds of, like, backflips and shit. It's supposed to be really good. I got this for, like, I think it was, like, 12 bucks or something on sale at GameStop, and I price matched it. And I think it's normally a $39 game, so that was a pretty good price. Pretty good price. Um... Damn, this was a long time ago. So, I actually own the physical version of the original game of this. But, um, if you wanted the sequel physically, you had to buy this. So, now I have an extra copy of that. Uh, I feel like we get screwed with some of these things, man. It's all conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theory. You might be wondering what this thing is, if it was even... So, um, Cody, uh, the owner of Pink Gorilla. See, you're going for a full PlayStation 4 set, because you sure have a ton of games now. No, but I will probably have some of the harder-to-get games for those kind of things. For the Vita and the PS4. Uh, anyone who's going to be insane... I, I'm, I'm willing to bet there's going to be a lot of people. It's like, no, I'm not counting Limited 1 or those fucking companies or that i i'm willing to bet there's going to be a lot of people like that because those are going to be the games that are going to be really hard to get so but anyway uh cody the owner of pink will who actually sadly his store got robbed uh actually recently so uh that kind of sucks but um back in i think it was early january he was doing a crazy trip thing and it ended quickly because he Bought out a Thailand store and bought that all back to a store. So, overall, like, I think he's still going through that stuff. Um, but there was uh, one night I caught him streaming. I, I still try to catch a few of his streams that. Because still, he sometimes does some random sales. But uh, he was just going through. Because he, he went it out of a storage unit to put the shit he was still going through. So he was having the storage unit live streaming going through these boxes and bins and shit and he would be grabbing things to sell. So if you don't know what this is, you probably you probably notice the N64 logo on this thing and you're probably wondering what the fuck is this if you don't always instantaneously always know what it is. So this is the device you needed with Hello Pikachu. That that is for your mic so you can Play Hello Pikachu. Now, this is normally a bit 
Twiceal. Like, Hello Pikachu by itself is usually super cheap. Getting the mic, or more importantly, this, because from what I understand, most mics will work in this. So, you don't have to worry so much about the original mic, but this thing itself. This thing usually can go between, like, 20-something to $50, or, like, if it's complete with the headset and the game and everything, maybe even to, like, $80 or something. But uh, I got this for 10 bucks from Cody, so I was like, sure, why not? Added to the list of weird games for me to play. You know, I can barely pronounce anything. It would be funny, would it not? Like that Konami survival game. Like, I've been wanting to legit do that with that Konami game. Uh, I can't even remember what it was fucking called. You, you play as a guy trapped in a place with cameras. And you have to talk to this chick on a headset. Trying to tell. It's like, shoot and move and go over there and blah 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 and stuff. Really? I had the bundle. Pretty sure it was sold for cheap? It might have changed. Either way, like, I took a quick glance, and I saw some, wow, well, like, $30 for that, but I was like, eh, why not? He, he was offering it cheap, so. Okay, what should we go through? I do have a lot of PS4 stuff, so maybe we should dwindle a little of that before we go to some of the non-PS4 stuff. Eh. Because there was a lot of PS4. Also, I don't remember if I showed off Shinmu 3. Um, I think I did show off Shinmu 3 last time. Um, but just in case, uh, this is the Kickstarter version. The game itself looks exactly like the retail version. You just get this probably incredibly easy to fake slipcover. Which, similar to Bloodstain, was a little disappointing in that front. But, uh, let's see. So, ah, here's some Walmart stuff I got. Uh, I've been wanting to get this. The price used is around $20. Walmart had a copy for sale for $9.88. Uh, so, I was like, eh, fuck. Because I've been waiting to find it really cheap, but the price never seems to ever go down you. So, uh, this game, I'm not too familiar with it. It looks, it's some kind of cooperative game where you fight hordes or something. I remember when it first came out, it was, um, $39.99, uh, when it first came out. So, they, my Walmart had a copy for $9.88. So, I was like, yeah, why not? I got it. So, uh, let's see. Wim, I got this for $4.99 on Best Buy on a sale. Um, assuming they're still doing it, uh, that also qualifies for Steam World Dig 2. Um, they keep putting Dig 2 and Shaq Fu on sale for $4.99 at Best Buy. It's like the third time they've done it. So, I got a copy. I also bought a copy to sell to GameStop and got an extra case out of that. Um, limited one release. This is, like, to my understanding, this... The first game of this is, like, some mobile game, and, like, the chicks that are... They're basically waifu ifications of battleships. And I'm not really familiar with this. Um, apparently Pad is, though. But, um, yeah. So, Limited One uh, did a physical... Now, this... Th th um, how to put this? So, Limited One's been trying out being a place selling games, but not actually counting it as part of the limited one releases. Like, they're distributing. And they've been trying it with a few titles. This was, um, I think the second or third title doing that. And, uh, NIS, or... No, no, IF. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I, I keep forgetting IF just made their own Western branch, and it's like, no, nah, we're, we're not gonna let NIS do our shit anymore. Um, they actually were selling these themselves on their own store, too. So, um, I think you could still buy these on the store, actually. And I think they're still available on Limited 1, too. But they all being pressed in that through Limited 1. But they'll post to not count as a part of the line. So, for those completionists. Um, okay, here's this. So, this one is probably going to... So, this is... Halloween Forever. Now, this is the first Red Arts game that came with a slipcover. I got another one that got a slipcover, too. So, this is a uh, very retro-looking game. Um, let's see. 
Um, it's very simplistic looking. Now, when I first saw it, I was just like, um, it does have some nice artwork. It's pretty simple in itself, too. But, um, I've actually played this some. Um, it's actually not bad. It's very simple. It's very simple. But it's actually not a bad game. You can actually get a deal on free on, uh, what's that one site? Itchy? 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 Okay, now, it's the site where you get, um, um... Oh, crap, I forgot what that one, that Lisa, Lisa, where well, you can get Lisa D on free. Let's see. Oh, and here. I remember I talked about this game with Pad. So, this game has been sold out and is very, very expensive. Well, I, okay, maybe not very, very, but it's, it's around like the 80-ish area. And that's a lot of money for a game. <laughs> that's a lot of money. Um, I was really disappointed because, uh, I wasn't expecting this to sell out, you know, this was like, ah, I'll just get laid on, it's just, it's gone! You fucking can't get it anywhere. And so, this eBay guy, I, I follow him, but he, he has tons of these copies. So if you're not familiar with Sony copies that have a hole punch through the barcode, and this was sealed, this was sealed, that is normal for these kind of things. These are either given to employees, reviews, or sometimes even giveaway things. So, the guy listed shit tons of most, like, he put PSP, Vita, he's putting tons of other weird games. Like, he has some kind of connection. So, I followed him because, you know, I might find something else. Uh, I got this for, like, $30, which is a vastly good deal for this. Now, these were all sold as, like, a special limited edition thing in uh, the U.S. So, um, I, I'm not really worried about those myself. So, I'm, I'm good. $30 sealed. I, I'm all right. The little hole punch thing don't really bother me. So. Game works and everything. It's all cool. Uh, let's see. This is in... I think this is a Japanese version. Yeah, it has the Siwo waiting. So, uh, but this has English. This is a visual novel. Um, it was, I think, $25. So I, I bought... It has English on it. There's a few visual novels I'm trying to get off PlayAsia. Let's see. Oh, and here's a... So these I all got in sale. These are all... Except for this one. These are all PAL versions. So, uh, if you ever seen Honey Pop... This is like the uh, the child friendly version of Honey Pop, I guess you could put. It's supposed to be a very similar concept. It has a story. You go out with chicks, and it has a, a puzzle esque system to it. So um, obviously, it's not um, to the levels of Honey Pop, but hey, it's on PlayStation, so you know it has to be at least uh, acceptable in that stance. Uh, the other three, these um, no, actually, this one's American too. <coughs> now that one came from um, Amazon's warehouse and it was I believe $12 now I got this for $9 so back on the Genesis there was this weird game with like orcs and shit and football and these these football leagues of mutants and shit are supposed to be like a, kind of a throwback to that so uh, I've been wanting to try there's one other game that's like this I've been wanting to try one of them, and this was like 9 bucks on Amazon, and it's supposed to have all the DLC and stuff, so I was like, sure, I'll get that. Let's see, okay, now this one, if you don't automatically just think, um, what is it, the Dragon Course, Wonder Boy 3 Dragon Course, that was the subtitle, right, Dragon Course, uh, then uh, you're probably not a true Sega person, but I'm not a big Sega person either, so. <laughs> uh, this is very inspired on, um, the course dragon or whatever it's called the the wonder boy game with the dragon thing uh it looks and plays very similar to it uh as far as i know this does not have a western version i've been waiting for it but i found this for like eight bucks on amazon new sealed so i was like sure and then another game that i've actually been interested in is uh this is like a musical platformer where you play as this little penguin that's like been adopted by um some other boards and it doesn't really realize that's not one of them and shit um this has no western version either it looked pretty charming i don't think it's probably anything of anyone's cup of tea heel but uh it was also 
from Amazon uh, Amazon sale. It's sealed. It was like ten bucks. So I was like, sure. I've been wanting it. They haven't made it available, so I'm just gonna buy it. Okay, let's look at some non PlayStation stuff. Um, well, I guess show this off real quick. I got Sonic Mania for like five bucks from the Wedbox Box machine when they were um, purging games from their machine. So uh, this is the uh, plus version because there are two Sonic Manias. Um, the original, which released as plus, and then you had them release a version not plus, which is the weirdest thing I've ever. Okay, it's like okay, we're gonna release the game with everything. Year later. Okay, now we're going to release the game with half the content. Wait, what? <laughs> like, that that doesn't make sense to me. Wedbox. Um, you've probably never seen a Wedbox machine. So, Wedbox is a window machine in America. I don't think they're even in PAL alias. I'm not really sure, actually. Um, I'm not really sure if they're in, like, like England or anything around there, but... So, Wiz, they're usually, like, at gas stations and shit. It's just a machine with touchscreen. You can rent or sometimes buy stuff. And, um, when I was doing flipping, I would find where they're selling cheap. And it's trading in higher when I was doing stuff like that. But, um, around, I think it was December, they decided they wanted to get out of having video games and just focus on movies. So, they were purging Tons of video games for cheap. That's where I got Alan's uh, copy of Borderlands 3. It was like $15 or something. So. Yeah, it's kind of like Gamefly, except it's a machine, like a vending machine thing sitting outside of that. Uh, more copies of Chinese Tokyo Xanadu. Uh, these are, let's see. I think this is copy 6 and 7, I think. I'm making about eight bucks per copy. Though I'm trying to spread them out at this point because uh, I don't want the one GameStop to have so many of them. But I got at least several extra Vita cases out of it. So, <laughs> well, the first five were dollar ninety nine each. Now, um, I got the package where I bought two more, but they were four ninety nine each on sale, which. Was a bit of a shame, but I was like, eh, they trade in for eight bucks, so I, I'm still getting something out of them. But yeah, you know what's fucking amazing to me is these have books in them. They actually have manuals in them. That kind of blows my damn mind. <laughs> and let's show, let's show off a few Switch games and go back to some PlayStation Four. Let's see, I got the, the uh, expansion thing, the Xenoblade Chronicles Two. It was on sale for. $28 at Walmart. So, I still haven't even played Chronicles 2 yet. <laughs> and, let's see. Ah, this was a limited one. Mrs. Explosion Man. I have no idea why they went with that. Miss Explosion Man. What? <laughs> but, most Asian games have? Really? Hmm. Uh, if you don't know anything about Miss Explosion Man, um, it is a sequel to Explosion Man, which I actually did get a physical version with a um, limbo and some bike dot bike game or something on the 360. Um, but Explosion Man never got any form of physical version, so apparently they pulled to switch and limited one. It's like, hey, let's print money. Print money! Hey, let's print lots and lots. Now this... Uh, this keeps... It's another limited company. So this company is a European company. And that's what they're called there. So they have a few releases, but they're like all over the place. Like this was released through four different stores. Play Asia, that, um, what's that Canadian store? VPG, I think. And there was another, like, there were, there were a few different places you could get this. And they all had their own special cover and they're all specially numbered in that line it it's weird but they they have a few other games and it's kind of just they're trying to have like a american store front for some of the releases it's a little confusing it's like finding a female mr mime in pokemon <laughs> okay let's go through some more ps4 stuff here uh let's see 
Ah, this is my the most recent pickup. Vomintide 2 was on sale now. That, just ignore that. Um, the deal of the day for Vomintide 2 was 8 bucks for PS4 and 5 bucks for Xbox One. I was like, yes, I actually liked the first one of Vomintide. So um, I grabbed uh, for 8 bucks. Pretty good. Sadly, you know, nothing special inside or anything. But hey, it's good to me. It's good to me. Let's see. Um, limited 1 stuff. This is supposed to be like a... One of those uh, full motion video type games. I don't honestly know anything about this one in particular. I don't follow a lot of full motion games. But this game I've actually been interested. One Door Song. So this is supposed to be like some bizarre game where you fight with music. You're bored. And it's uh, it looks pretty interesting. It's very colorful. It's graphically not like amazing-ish. I mean, it's very, like, you know, very colorful, child-friendly looking aesthetic to it, but, um, the gameplay looked it fun, so I, I'm actually interested in trying this one. Let's see. Deadpool. Uh, Deadbolt. This is supposed to be, like, an insanely hard fucking game where you play, like, the Grin Weeper. Play like the fucking Gwen Weeple and you're supposed to like kill people and shit and you can die in one hit. Uh, probably not a game I'm going to be good at. Now here's another game I'm excited. Now if you remember when I tried um, Darkest Dungeon, this uh, this company, um, uh, is it good to you? Kafton? Kafton? Um, so they made their own kind of Darkest Dungeon with anime. And as you can see it has... If I can get a non glare kind of look. It has some pretty nice artwork there. It's kind of like a mix of Etra Odyssey with a darker tone to it. I mean, uh, what's that? What's that one anime? Abyss, I think it's called. Abyss something. I guess you could maybe kind of call it a mashup there. Uh, there were all few, like, there was like a, um, an overhead like dungeon traveling versus the side scrolling deepest dungeon ad. But, um,. I've heard a lot of people compare it to Deepest Dungeon. This does not have a American release currently or planned as far as I know. This is the Asian version, I believe. I think this is the Asian version. Either way, this version I got has English on it. It might be the Chinese version. It has Chinese, traditional, simplified, Japanese, Korean, and English. So, not 100% sure, but I got that. Um, Coffee Talk. This is supposed to be someone else's kind of take on, um, what was it, uh, Valhalla, which Limited One uh, did a physical version. So you won, like, this coffee shop, and it's, like, trying to please clients while having a social system. Now, you uh, notice it has a CEO waiting. This is the Japanese version, but it does have English. It has no English release plan currently. But I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Limited 1 or somebody picked them up. Um, this is strictly limited. This came with some random goodies here. Not anything too amazing. Because it was, um, they had some shipping issues. So they sent, like, a Sawi card. Then the usual postcard they do. And then I'm not even sure what this is supposed to be. It's a hardened piece of plastic. But, um... I don't think you can see the effect on the camera, but it's one of those kind of things where it's a little, like, a little, not much. I, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be for, like, drinks or something. I'm not really sure. But, uh, this is supposed to be... Now, I believe, if I remember correctly, when I showed this, when they put this on sale, a uh, pad was familiar with these characters. They're supposed to be very popular in European Powell territories. Um, I wasn't familiar with them. I remember I showed this clip where they're like, the, the, um, this guy was doing like some songs like, dum da 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 dum 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 da dum da dum 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 da dum da dum da Like, something like that. But this is supposed to be a beat em up, so, I like beat em up, so, I got it. So, hopefully it's good. Um, does not have online, sadly. Just split screen. Damn it. Courses, courses them all. Uh, let's see, Dark Side of Three. I got this for five bucks, sealed. Five bucks. 
five bucks. Let's see. Mutant Woad to Eden. Um, this is supposed to be like, um, like, uh, the, um, ah, what's those alien games? The, um, I used to watch the movies a lot as a kid. And the game, the game didn't look like mind blowing, but I think it'll be fun. Um, oh, what's those games with the aliens and the tacticalness? The, um, it's that game that Spoony lost his mind over because they made a Thought Person game. You know, it's like the, uh, the betrayal. You know, the whole betrayal thing. Um, shit, I can't remember. But this is supposed to be like that. Uh, this was like nine bucks. Uh, it was a game of the deal day at uh, GameStop. So uh, I was like, sure, why not? I don't really know much about that one in particular, but nine bucks, not bad. Now this, um, I don't know what's up with Japan. Will we making these tavern themed Japanese RPGs? So this is um, from. Uh, if you recognize the logo right there, they've been making a lot of the mobile ports to the PS4, and I don't know if this one specifically is on mobile. It looks like the same kind of graphic fidelity of some of the other titles, so I won't be surprised. But the concept sounds interesting. You basically want to ball and stuff, and you have to pay the god of poverty back for your, like, brother soul shit. Everybody loves the medieval. Hmm. But, um... So, the concept sounds kind of okay, but these... No games kind of hit and miss. Like, there's... Two of them I thought was really interesting. There's this one that's kind of like Sukaden, where you get a whole bunch of characters to join you, but it has a more interesting idea of making sub-parties that enhance the stats of your main party, which is actually a really interesting idea to put the extra characters to some functional use. Because that was probably one of the big problems of the Sukaden games. It's fun finding all the characters, knowing these characters, and trying out different combinations of them. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to the people you like or have really good skills and stuff. You're not going to likely use probably 50% of the characters even. Because there's so many of them, damn it. Uh, let's see, Blazing Chrome. This is supposed to be a uh, Contra spiritual sequel. Uh, it looks very similar to Hardcore or, or Corpse. No, it's Hard Corpse on the Genesis. Uh, I hear this is really good. I'm kind of hit and miss with Contra games. Like, I actually played through the original arcade Contra game without dying after playing it very too much. But, um... I got the arcade original beat. I beat the NES version, but with the Thory Life code. Um, I don't think I beat Super C. I beat the Game Boy original version. Um, that's about all I really got in my Contra book. Though I do own several other Contra games. Though I got like the PS2 one. But I hear this is pretty good, so... Let's see, Serial Cleaner. This is supposed to be a stealth game where you play as a cleaner killing uh, serial killers messes. Like, you go to houses and you have to clean up the murder scene while cops are investigating it. It's kind of funky sounding. I don't know if it's really much good, though. I'm not really too good at stealth stuff. Um, this is a game I was very excited about. River City Goals. I love with the River City Ransom shit. So, I was really excited to hear about this game. Um, and then some asshole spoiled the ending. And I became vastly less interested. Um, it's probably still a good game, though. I haven't played it yet. As you can see, it's still sealed. But uh, it was kind of disappointing to hear the ending's kind of lackluster. So, um, another one of the mobile ports of their games. Uh, I think this one's a sequel to... One of them, I believe. But, yeah, it's just... Generic JLPG of the day. Man, that's something I never thought I'd be saying. <laughs> uh, this is another one of the distributing titles Limited One Games did. 
Um, this is supposed to be like a Metroidvania Mega Man-ish game? Something along that, I believe? I believe this is like a Thor game, or it's a port of the game that's on the Switch. I'm not 100% sure. The Ape X of 2D Action. Face Pace Slash 2D Action Explosions on the scene. It's the Thor game? Okay, so it's not that Switch game. Because I know there's a Switch game, and then the original, I think, is... Was it on the 3DS, or was it only available digitally? It's by the same guy that did the Mega Man Zero series. Ooh, that's interesting to know. So it's more Mega Man-ish than, eh? Eh? Okay, okay, that's a lot of more PS4. Let's look at the stack of small 3DS stuff. Uh, this is supposed to be a weird card board game s game. Um, NIS, I think, did this. Yeah, NIS. Um, as far as I know, this didn't sell very well. It had a limited edition standard. I think I got this for like 10 bucks. Let's see. Then this was a deal of the day at GameStop for 12 bucks. So I was like, hmm, 12 bucks. Usually, Pokemon games keep going up in price as they go get old also. I was like, eh, I was like, eh, I, I guess. I mean, 12 bucks. I mean, it's probably not going to get cheaper than that. And then this. Dragon Quest Seven. I finally got my own copy of it. So, I've always gushed about Dragon Quest Seven. I love, love Dragon Quest Seven. It was a good game. It does have flaws. It has an incredibly long fucking opening on the PS1. I believe it was Dennis, or maybe it might have been Pad. Somebody told me way back when this force came out that they have redid the opening way better to get to the action more sooner. Because I mean, you, I mean, if you're playing this blindly, you know, like you're you're just seriously playing it, and you won't like you know mashing through all the text and that. Like if I never correctly on the PS One, the original opening was like a fucking hour long. It was like, where the hell is everything? So, um, also this adds, like, a way to find the tablets easier, and I hope it fixed the one tablet that's bugged. Um, there was a tablet when you flood a cave in the PS1 version, and if you didn't get the tablet before you flooded it, you locked yourself out, and since that was a tablet you needed to actually beat the game, you locked yourself out from finishing the game. So I would hope they fix that. Um, there was also a weird, uh, glitch with the... Or down here will you could like go accidentally get out of sequence and there's a moment when she leaves your party and the game adds all back to your party and it causes a glitch so I would hope that's fixed in this too but uh, maybe one day if I ever get a fucking capture call for a 3ds if loopy ever gets to it uh, I would love to play this and see how different it is from the original version Cause I really, I really do like Dragon Quest Seven. It was, I spent, I think, like two hundred and fifty hours in it. It was a really long game, had a lot of shit. Okay, let's go through some more PS4 stuff. Um, the Bard's Tale uh, Four Director's Cut. I didn't even know this existed. It was a game of the D. It was a deal of the day for ten bucks. I think it was. So I was like, sure, why not? And it was brand new. I think. Of course, uh, you know, GameStop brand new, not new new, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Let's see, another one of the mobile ports. Uh, this one, yeah, this is, I played the first one of this. Oh, yeah, the, the two might help. No, the, is it just me? Because the, the case looks like it's faded. Like, there's, like, this light tint blue over it. If you ever see, like, games at a store that's been there for, like, forever with a fluorescent light pointed at, they fade the artwork. And every time I look at this case, I'm just like, it looks so faded. It's weird. It's very strange. But, um, yeah, I played the first game randomly on stream to try one of these out. Because, uh, that little, that little cat killer was in it. It was probably one of the most generic JRPGs I played. Um, this series, I played the first one of this a little bit. It's like um, hardcore Pokemon monster stuff. Um, 
uh, I, I guess this was really popular in the indie scene because it's up to a damn third entry. But it's supposed to be really deep. Let's see. Collective breed, 700 plus creatures, randomly generated dungeons, countless collectibles, and no level cap. How the hell is that work? No level cap. I don't know if I should believe that. <laughs> I'm level 9,909 billion gazillion quadrillion and still going. Let's see. Ah, this one. This was a Kickstarter. No level cap. Yeah, apparently it, it does advertise that on the back. It's uh, right down here on the back. No level cap. It says why right fail. I don't know if I really believe that, but that's what it claims. So. Children of Zodiac. So this was a Kickstarter game, and it um, it was trying a very Final Fantasy tactic-y kind of look and uh, game. So I was pretty interested in this. So I was excited to hear about this one. So it's a tactics game. So this is something I've actually been interested to try out. Let's see. Oh, and here's that one that one game I told you about where I was solely originally interested in it because of eh, eh. you gotta keep in mind everything's reversed for me so like i'm seeing like my thing and i'm like doing so this eh, i'm trying to that green hair kill the white tail <laughs> so she's from an incredibly obscure anime from a guy i watched who did a review on her anime <laughs> And she, and, and he brought up this game when he was talking about it. So I looked it up. I was like, eh, it's really cheap. So I bought it with one of my uh, purchases I got. But it has all kinds of other characters. Like you might recognize uh, the pink hair chick heel. And there's, oh, I can't remember what the anime she's from is called. Uh, let's see. And then, of course, you got, uh, what's her name? Siko? Sinkyo? I, I don't remember how to pronounce the crazy little, uh, pop star I don't care though. Uh, going to show this to a buddy that's like the <laughs> you got no. I don't really know much more about her aside from she's like some kind of pop music idol kind of thing. I have, the reason I even actually know her is one of my older viewers and he is, uh, he goes by a different name in Discord. He doesn't usually talk, but he is in my Discord group. Um, where is he? No, yeah, she no, she will, she, she will, is what he's going by on the Discord. But, uh, he went by a different name on YouTube. But, um, he actually really likes the character, but he hates the English voice actor. Um, that's actually why I even know anything about her. Now, to be fair, there was probably a chance I may have warned her through some other means, but... No, I actually got got this game solely because of this obscure character from a, um, Whiskey Force episode that turned into a Scooby-Doo mystery show. <laughs> it's really weird. Yeah, that's about all I really know about her. And uh, let's go through some of the Switch stuff. Actually, random Goodwill item. I've been trying to stop by Goodwill again. Um, I've never read this anime before, but I know a little about it. Or oh, manga, you know what I mean. But uh, just random manga, you know, 50 cents. So, cool, yo. Anyway, moving on. Let's do some of the Switch stuff. Let's see, this was another release from the Iffy, that limited one, uh, the distribution, Fairy Fencil F Avidan Dark Force. Now, I think this is a port of a PS4 game, I think, with uh, additional content, I think. I don't know if it has new content or anything on it, I'm not... 100% sure. Uh, yes, that was still funny. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, I went to Goodwill and found a Yaoi um, manga, uh, manga. And if you don't know what that is, that is a type of manga directed at females. Uh, it's basically hot guys on hot guys. And it was in the child section for 50 cents. I actually bought it 
just to show a picture and a video of it, saying, this was at Goodwill. Oh my goodness, what the fuck? <laughs> and then I bond it. I bond it. <laughs> but, uh, yes, that was weird. Um, so weird. Uh, yes, the, uh, that cover does look very Final Fantasy. Uh, nah. You did to save the... Well, I guess, um... I, I guess, technically. But yeah, that was pretty weird for, like, an uh, adult book and the kids. So I guess when you really think about it, I probably did kind of save somebody, maybe. Um, or I guess I could have cock-blocked someone. <laughs> Depending on how you looked at it. Um, this I don't really know anything about. It was a, another distributed title that Limited One Games was doing. Doesn't really say much of the bat. Explore, craft, gather, construct, decide for your people, fight, triumph, convince, and survive. It's single player, so it's not like civilization, so I'm not really sure. I think, I think he, um, there was a game on the 360 I played that I think he was compared this to, and that's why he kind of decided to buy it. It's somewhere to see. I can't remember how the hell it was at. Um... Another visual novel. My my uh, girlfriend is a more maid. Um, I got this for thirty dollars on eBay. It's usually about fifty dollars. Uh, this is um, this does have English on it, even though it, you're not seeing any English. Uh, it's a visual novel. Um, yeah, your girlfriend's apparently a more maid. So <laughs> now uh, these are super whale games. I haven't taken them out of the plastic thing because I like to try and save these stickles because I think they're pretty nice on some of them. So, uh, Smoke and Sacrifice, The Gardens, Between, and I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. It even has such a trippy-ass um, like cover, though. It's so weird. Um, I, I get the bundles from Super Whale Games, so similar, you save on shipping because they Save all three and ship them at one time. Um, I'm not familiar with any of these three games, though uh, Smoke and Sacrifice looked kind of interesting. It's like a 2D, and I think it's kind of like um, Darkest Dungeon, kind of, I think. So, I'm not really too familiar with any of those particular interests. And I guess uh, we do have some unique box items over here, so uh, some Play Asia releases. Uh, these are both Vita. This one. Uh, I don't. Let's see. Just never open them. Never open them. Never open them. But then I can't play them. Um, this is the uh, Pansu Hunter. Pansu Hunter. Uh, this is supposed to be some kind of weird... <laughs> playing games <laughs> this is supposed to be some kind of visual novel well it's like Danganronpa where you end up with the pants or <laughs> like um, I don't know anything about this so I can't speak about the quality of this <laughs> it's on PlayStation so apparently it's appropriate enough <laughs> Uh, this I hold's actually pretty good. Uh, from what I understand, I think this is supposed to be a Metroidvania-esque game, I think, I hold. But I'm not familiar with it at all. Let's see, discover the mains of a world full of fairies and spirits. Venture into the mysterious world and find meaning of life. Doesn't really have any screenshots in the back, sadly, so... But I think this is supposed to be like a Metroid-esque game, if I remember quickly. So, could be interesting. Then, somebody probably knows this thing. So, I was forced hesitant to get this. Uh, the box is incredibly beat up. But, this is the bundle that comes with uh, the Wooly Anibo in the game. It was sealed. I did open it up just to make sure uh, it was okay, though. Because sometimes these things are sometimes with horns that, but the game was sealed in that. But I was like, I always have the Wooly Anibo. So I was like, how much does the game sell for nowadays? So, ooh, excuse me. 
So I saw it's mostly around forty dollars for the game. So I was like, oh well, I guess that's a good deal then. So yeah, it was twenty bucks at uh, Walmart. It was apparently originally priced at thirty two eighty four. So. Uh, I do know this got a version on the 3DS. I don't want to care about that. So, I was like, eh. Do you have all the colors? No. No. Uh, there was green, pink, and blue, right? I got green. Green I got way back when GameStop was doing those buy two, get three free, or whatever kind of thing. Some of those were crazy. Um... Let's see, uh, random PC game I got at the Goodwill. Uh, this was the uh, Dracula Resurrected. It looks like some kind of point and click game. So, uh, I never heard of it, but the discs were clean, though the front case is uh, clipped there, so I have to change that. But uh, never heard of it. It looks like some kind of venture game. You know, it was like a dollar or something, so... But yeah, I don't really care about the... Plus, uh, you could even argue I might actually be able to... I might actually be able to sell the Nebo maybe. Because I'm not... Like I said, I got the green Nebo. I don't know, like, which one might particularly have more value to it. I mean, I didn't actually take the Nebo itself out, but... Yeah, it's just all perfectly fine and everything. It's like it's really brand newish. But, um, yeah, I, I could probably PC game to be thrown in the cabinet box. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to avoid really buying any more. Like, I got way tons of old physical PC games. Way too many to count at this point. Uh, it's going to suck when I go to make a list of all those. <laughs> but, um, I could probably actually sell the Nevo and probably make up probably at least half the money if not most of it depending on the prices uh let's see then i got the uh dusk oval which uh looks like some kind of hack and slash game this was on sale on um amazon i believe i think it was like 20 dollars or something i'm not really familiar with the this particular game but uh, the company that published it, which is kind of hard to see, though, because the plastic. Maybe I can find a logo on the back, though. The, uh, Pee -cube? Pee -cube? It's pretty looking. Dusk Drival? Drival? Oh, that looked like a O, though. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, yeah, that looked, that looks more like a, I, <laughs> I see it now. It looks like a fucking O, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I see it now. Um, it's pretty cool looking. The style reminds me a lot of the... Oh, they might be from the same developers, maybe, then. Because now you mention it, it actually does look kind of like it. But, uh, yeah, that, that publisher, they've done some pretty interesting games. So, um, I, I figured I'd pick it up. There was another one they did I was interested in that I still need to get. It's called um, Waging Loop. And it kind of reminds me of 999 because the premise is that you you play through it and you get killed and you loop through it again and try different choices or even open up new choices. So um, it kind of reminds me of the concept of 999 a little bit. So that was one I was kind of curious. In. Now I got the Yakuza Remastered Collection long pre-ordered back when I had my 20% off, so I got the 20% off this. So this is supposed to have <clears throat> a two-disc uh, digipack collection of Yakuza 5, a uh, PlayStation 3 case, and the pack full... Let's see. No, that, but it's supposed to have um, Yakuza 3, 4, and 5. Now, these are, for the most part mostly unchanged content wise um there are a few quests that were moved about some naked guy running around i i'm not too familiar with it but it apparently was removed but on the plus side um i believe it was yakuza 
Was it Yakuza 3? I think it was Yakuza 3 that had tons of content stripped out of the American version. I think it was 3. It might have been 4. But, um... Yeah, all that is restored and the mini games and stuff all done. So, um... I'd say it's a good trade-off in my opinion. I don't really care about a half-naked man running around the streets. But, uh, you know... Different people have different uh, things. So. <laughs> and then now we just got this dwindling little stack of PS5 stuff. So, uh, another limited one... Uh, not limited one, but a Red Arts game of a limited... Another limited game from Red Arts. This is the second time I have a slip cover. I'm not really familiar with this game. It looks like some kind of side scroll shmup thing as like a giant mobile suit thing. I don't really know anything about it, honestly. But it was only $19, so it was like, eh. Let's see... Some more limited one games, uh, a VR game. This is apparently based on some urban myth game that killed you. Don't really know much about it. Uh, another mobile, another one of the mobile ports. See, this one actually looks pretty good. This one looks like the one that's, um, yeah, this actually might be a sequel to that, actually, because it talks about 100 companions and that. So, actually, this one actually looks like it might be good, actually. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, this was a Kickstarter award. Uh, Tokyo Chronos. So, this is, like, supposed to be, like, a visual novel VR game where a bunch of people are trapped in some kind of time-stopped version of Tokyo or something, and I think somebody was killed, and they are confused whether they were even alive or dead or something. So, yeah. So, I don't know if this is super good. Hopefully, it's better than that, um, what was it, uh, Project Lex. That, uh, was very disappointing, because I heard good things about that, and I was like, oh, that's very disappointing. But this was a kick, so, uh, Limited One Games did sell this on their website, because they were the people who printed the discs off for them, but mine was a kick, so reward. Sadly, there was Nothing done special for it, though. Oop. And then, uh, My Memories of Us. This is supposed to be some kind of puzzle game. It's, uh, the kind of... How should I say? The aesthetics of its setting kind of reminds me of Nazi Germany, kind of. Because it seems to be about, like, hoarding a select group of people, which are supposed to be people wearing a uh, red... Lex was great. Best one-hour game ever. <laughs> no, it was pretty disappointing. Uh, Red Arts game is doing a uh, limited version for the Switch of this game. And it was, I think, thirty nine ninety nine. I was like, what? I could have swore I saw that on PlayAsia for the PAL version. Really cheap. And uh, I got this on PlayAsia for $19. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to just buy that. Then. I'd rather get the PS4 version anyway. So... Got that. Then, the last little thing. You might notice this odd little keychain-y kind of thing. So, uh, sadly, it's st stuck over the front. But uh, this is Demo Reborn, which is VR. Now, there are a few different versions of Demo. The original uh, console release of Demo was Vita. It was originally a mobile game. Then it got a Vita version. Then it got a Switch version, and then you got this version. Now, I don't know if this version and the Switch version are similar, because you see, it says compatible, which means you don't have to play in VR. So, I don't know if this is like the Switch version with VR stuff, or if this has unique stuff. I've been meaning to play um, the game a long time ago. Hello, welcome, sorry. You actually just showed up near the end of showing off a lot of the new pickups I got. Um, but I've been very interested in trying Demo. I just haven't gotten around to it because, you know, I got so much stuff. And that's pretty much everything I got here for today. But, uh, yeah, sadly, you just showed up at the end, my friend. I had quite a lot of stuff I showed off here, yeah. See, I'll try... 
I'll give you a big shot of everything getting uphill again. Yeah. Because I gotta stack it all back uphill anyway, so I can cow glide down on my. Hello! Hello! But yeah, I just uh, actually just went through all my pickups that. Lots of imports. <laughs> And probably way too much PS4 stuff. But, yeah. I just actually went through all of them. Overall, though, several titles here I'm interested in trying. I definitely want to see if this is, like, really hard, like the old Contra games or not. Whip you guys wived at the end. That does suck. But, um, you can watch, um, I'll come back next time. Um, you can watch, I do post these on my YouTube channel. I don't know if I want to keep, um, videos of my pickups on Twitch. I've been uploading my playthroughs back up to Twitch. But, um, I usually do these once every two to three months. I build up a lot of the stuff I bought. And then I, well, I go through... Show off the new pickups of interest. This one was still a good find heel for thirty dollars because, like I said, when you go on eBay, people want like eighty bucks for this. I was really shocked how that really sold out really fast. I I was not expecting that to sell out really fast. I I don't know why it sold out so fast, but as you as you can see, I got quite quite a bit of crap heel. <laughs> But, yeah, pretty good haul for the, eh, I'd say, what, maybe the last three months. It's been a little while since I've done a pickup stuff, that, but that's pretty much uh, the haul for today, that.